This is a demonstration of the WordSeer user interface for exploring text collections. Its goal is to help the user do exploratory text analysis, and we'd like to extend it to help users do coding of qualitative coding of written documents. Here the user is looking at Shakespeare. Uh, the overview screen shows the most frequent nouns, verbs, and adjectives, and phrases. It also shows the metadata associated with Shakespeare's canons, so scenes, acts, the speakers or the characters, and the titles of the plays. So we clicked on the word true. We're going to compare true versus false. The first view shows a table of sentences, but now we're switching to the word tree, which is a concordance view with an extra twist of showing the sentences with curvy lines. This uh, visualization was invented by Martin Wattenberg and Fernanda Villegas. We've done a twist on it that shows concordance context on both the left and the right of the focus word. Now we're searching on the word false and we're showing how WordSeer facilitates side-by-side -side comparisons. There can be two, three, any number of tabs or views side-by-side. Now we're going to compare the context of true versus false in Shakespeare's plays, and we're looking at uh, plays that must have the most number of sentences with true versus false, and sorting by those numbers. So uh, that's just giving us a feeling for the context. It turns out Cymbeline is, is quite high in this, this use of the word false, as well as true. So what we're going to do is look at the words that co-occur with both false and symboline, just to get a feeling for what the most frequent adjectives are, honored, worse, confederate, and so on. We're going to do the same thing with true. We're going to narrow or filter by the play symboline so that we see true and symboline and look at the context around those words. And now look at the co-occurring words here and see how they differ between true and symboline versus false and symboline and the user can explore that and look at that and look for similarities and differences. So now we're going to show a facility that allows uh, the user to explore words in any context they appear in. So here in the word tree we see a sentence and then we see a word and the word in this case is fool. Now a context menu comes up that allows the user to look at words similar in similar contexts to fools, one of which is spirit, which is also interesting the user decides to look at words similar to spirit. Fools is there as well as uh, other w interesting words. Uh, but uh, they decide actually that spirits is a pretty interesting word and they want to explore this in more depth. And in fact, they want to make a set of words that are related to spirit, which the user decides to call supernatural entities. So it's very, very easy to make a new set. This can be a concept or a thesaurus, however you want to think about it. And then Right from here, the user can search for all of the occurrences of spirits in Shakespeare's plays. So uh, we see that now. We've removed one of the earlier views so that there's a little more room. And the user now scrolls through looking at sentences containing spirit and checks to see if there are any other interesting words like spirits. Here we found wizards, and we decide to add that to the supernatural entities uh, category, or thesaurus and looking for another word maybe that's similar to this just by reading through the sentences that have spirits and the user actually sees fairy thinks that's an interesting word as well adds that to the supernatural entities category now what's nice is it's immediately possible to reuse that that thesaurus or category that's been created on the fly so you can see by searching just for the first few letters of supernatural entities it appears in the query box and now we can look for all sentences that have any of spirits, fairies, or wizards and on top of that we can look at words that co-occur with those so it turns out great and green and full and bold are adjectives that co-occur with those nouns and the next step is to show the word frequencies capability this allows the user to look at counts to see the behavior uh, in a more quantitative manner. Actually, you can see in a bar chart which plays use these words most frequently. 
Um, if they tend to occur in different acts more frequently, like towards the end of a play, we see that trumpets tend to occur in Act 5, for example. And again, uh, if we want this sorted, we can sort by who tends to use these words most frequently, so it's not surprising that it's characters from Midsummer Night's Dream, and um, Mary Wise and Windsor might be a little more interesting.